Hey, my name's René. Today I'm going to show you how to find and solve the most common problems on any cassette deck. And it doesn't need to be a cassette deck. It can also be a shoebox recorder, a 42 cm wide professional or consumer deck. Mostly they work all the same. Walkmans are built a little different, but the theory behind it is also the same. First of all, when you look at a cassette deck, shoebox recorder or player and you have a problem, 90% of these problems are caused by the belts these days. The belts are here. They, may, they come from the motor, they go to the flywheel and from the flywheel either a separate belt or directly. These days, if you look at you know, you, you put a cassette in it and for this video I took the cassette door out so you can better see what I'm doing. Normally the cassette's in here, you close it, you press play and it doesn't work. 90% of the time it is the belts that are gone, are melted, are no longer in place, so you need to replace them. There's lots and lots of videos on YouTube, different models. Um, I will show you for this model how I replace the belts on this one. If you would like to see the complete video of how I replaced all the belts, cleaned the transports, etc., just click on the link in the right hand upper side corner. Now, once you replace the belts, it should all work. So what I do when I replace the belt is take a pause because in the last few months since I've picked up this hobby again and I've been repairing these is that the belts that are currently available are a bit of a hit and miss and sometimes mostly miss especially the ones you buy off of eBay or Amazon in one of those assortment packages directly from China are very low quality. What happened to me a few times is that I replaced the belts and I find that they are too tight or they've been not cut correctly or they haven't been finished correctly and it gives you all sorts of troubles. And then when you use these belts and they are a tiny bit too tight, the tension between the flywheel and the motor is too high and that pulls the flywheel out and it also pulls on the motor. And when that happens, the chances are that the bearings inside the motor wear out, but also the flywheel bearings will wear out. And also you get a lot of high wow and flutter. For those who are not familiar with the term wow and flutter, wow and flutter is basically a non-stable speed. Wow is what we call a slow variation in speed. Flutter is a high variation in speed. You can hear this when you play a single tone on a cassette. Three kilohertz is mostly used for this and it's a bit of a high tone, but it's easier to hear what is in or out of specification. And what I then try to do is to match what I can hear with what I can see and try to match the variation to one component that I see rotating with the same frequency as I can hear in the variation in the tone. To recap, when you replace the belts, get them from a reputable source. There are a few here in Europe and I'm sure that there are a few in the US and other parts of the world as well. If you have just replaced the belts and you notice a high wow and flutter, look critically at the belts you have just replaced because maybe you just received a bad one, which is very possible. Another possibility is, is that the motor has gone bad or has worn out. You can take a screwdriver and put the metal end on the motor in your ear on the handle and just listen to the motor. You should not be able to hear any ticking, grinding, or any other weird noises. And it should be a fairly stable rotational sound coming from the motor. Or you can even take the belt off and lightly put your finger on the motor, slowing it down. It should not stop and it should continue to rotate with an even torque. But listen first, as it should be a very smooth sound when you listen to the motor through the screwdriver. When you do find yourself with high wow and flutter due to belts that are too tight or bad quality, don't keep fiddling with the transports. Don't keep fiddling with the deck, but do yourself a favor and order new belts from a reputable source. I'm happy to share my sources with a link below, but even those are a bit hit and miss and there's some suppliers that I don't order from. I have ordered, sometimes I have to order the same belt for the same machine from a different source to get the deck up to my standards. Then what you need to do 
is clean the heads, clean the pinch roller. That's another very common problem. If you play a pre-recorded tape and you don't hear any high frequencies, chances are the head is dirty. So to clean the head, you need a Q-tip, some alcohol, or if you don't have alcohol, uh, use Windex, use you know any blue all-purpose cleaner. You take a Q-tip, you wet it with alcohol or all-purpose cleaner, and you clean the head. The head should be shiny. There should be no brown or black residue whatsoever. You know, the same with the pinch roller. Clean it. If you look at the rubber pinch roller here, and the pinch roller sits onto the capstan, which is this little bar that spins, and you see where previously tapes were running, it's not clean yet. So clean it both, dry it off, and then if you really want to go overboard here, and uh, there is some, the, you can use some Kite Clean or some Rubber Renew to put some moisture back into the pinch roller. You know, not a whole lot. You just dip it on there, make sure the whole pinch roll is covered, let it sit for a few minutes, let it pull in, and now you preserve the pinch roller as well as you can. You know, take a, a dry Q-tip, okay, let it run for a while. If the belts are still good, and you press play, and the machine stops after a little while, two, three, four seconds, chances are that if you have a tape counter, that the belt from the tape counter to the take up reel is gone or slipping. What you need to do then, again, of course, replace the belts. Some machines have shiny reflective surfaces on the take up reel, and I'll show you a picture here. Um, sometimes those take-up reels get really dirty and they don't reflect uh, the signals anymore. So that's when you have to take it apart and clean it. But with some older decks with a mechanical tape counter, the auto stop is on the tape counter itself. So if the belt is slipping or not correct, then the tape stops and you got to replace the belt. Another issue you may encounter is if you press play or record, it only records one channel or it's distorted on both channels or you don't hear anything at all. Older machine, and that is 1985 and older, typically have a record and play switch. The record and play switch is here. Um, which is, can be one or two long metal bars operated by a spring to the transport. Now, if I press this on play, you see nothing happens. However, if I press this on record and play, you see that the bar operates the switch and the switch has dozens and dozens of contract, uh, contacts and switches between the record circuit and the play circuit. If those contacts are oxidized or dirty, you will get distortion or maybe one or two channels that don't play or record. So what you need to do, uh, let me press this on stop is get some contact cleaner, deoxid or whatever, spray the switch and operate it manually a couple of dozen times. Clean those switches and clean those contacts. The take up reel here is most likely driven by either a cog wheel or by a rubber. So I'm going to take this little plate off and show you what I mean. Because I did a little bit of preparation. I only have to take out two screws.
and now the plate comes out. This may be different from your deck. You know, maybe you have to take the transport out to get access to it. But as you see here, there is a rubber, what we call idler tire. And the idler tire drives the take up reel. If this is dirty, dried out, old, whatever, it will no longer drive the take up reel. Um, if the belt is still running and it's not wound up here, the tape, the tape will get eaten in this position. So what you want to do, again, take a Q-tip and clean that idler tire. You know, it's rubber, so clean it. I hope my hand's not in the way here. You know, sometimes you can get from it from above and you can just reach it. On this occasion, you can't. So, let's clean it. And again, as I've been saying, if you want to preserve the rubber so it will last longer, you can put some rubber renew, some Kai clean, some rubber reconditioning fluid on there so it doesn't dry out anymore or not as fast. Once you've done that, make sure that everything is clean and dry. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are the most likely points why a deck doesn't work, what the most common failures are. So we have the belts, most likely 90% the belts are gone. Then we have the pinch roller here with the capstan, those need to be clean. Then we've got the record and playhead, those need to be clean. Then we've got the counter. If a machine stops after a few seconds, most likely it's the belt from the counter to the take up reel. And lastly, we have the record play switch here that needs to be cleaned. Once you've done all of those and you still have a problem, it's going to get a little bit more involved, but I promise once you do all those things, you've solved 98% of all problems with all cassette decks. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope it was useful. Um, if you learned anything, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.